Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Thinking Crypto channel, your home for crypto news and interviews. Big day for the crypto market. Bitcoin continued its downward price movements. I want to share what different analysts are saying, what you can expect to happen next. And in addition, macro investor Ralph Powell weighed in on the situation, you know, talking about people are getting bearish. So I want to share the, uh, what he had to say. It's a really insightful tw uh, Twitter thread that he put out. Uh, I also want to talk about Hester Peirce and Elad Roisman, commissioners at the SEC, have released a letter today uh, condemning Gary Genser and his motives and his actions. And it doesn't include just uh, crypto. It includes other things. But obviously, crypto is a big part of it, given what we're seeing overall with crypto regulations, uh, the Ripple lawsuit and so forth. So we got some infighting, some battle happening at the SEC. This is good for us who are holding crypto, of course. Uh, so I want to break down the details there. And we have some very bullish news out of the Middle East. Uh, I've told you guys about Kevin O'Leary, and he's been talking about uh, sovereign wealth funds. And, you know, there's a lot of capital out there, a lot of oil money and so forth. And a lot of it's coming to crypto. We have one uh, respective investment firm that is ready to take a position. We got news today. So I'll break it all down. Before we get to it, please go ahead and hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment below, and hit the subscribe button if you're new here. It helps support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything. Guys, this content is brought to you by Algorand, which is one of the leading blockchain projects in the crypto market. They are building the future of finance, combining decentralized technology and traditional financial models. And uh, they're doing some great things. I hold the Algo token in my portfolio. I'm very bullish in Algorand. It's why I selected them to be the official sponsor of this channel. And they're getting massive investments, guys. Borderless Capital launched a $500 million ALGO fund uh, to build out the ecosystem uh, on Algorand. In addition, Michael Arrington and Anthony Scaramucci have both invested hundreds of millions of dollars into Algorand. And in fact, uh, Anthony Scaramucci tweeted just today. He said, I have a keen sense for where Algorand is going. Remember, Mayor Francis Suarez of Miami is taking half his paycheck in algos. Wow, right? There is room for a few at the top. Algo will be there. I agree with him, not because Anthony Scaramucci said it, but rather from my own research. Central banks are building their CBDCs on Algorand. We've talked about the Marshall Islands doing that years ago. And in my interview with Sean Ford at Algorand, he said they're talking to multiple central banks um, and they're looking to scale to 10,000 transactions per second. So very bullish, uh, getting a lot of, of adoption. And if you guys would like to learn more about Algorand, please visit algorand.com. All right, uh, let's move to the crypto market. And boy, is it bloody right now. There's red across the board, Bitcoin under $47,000, Ethereum under $3,800. And I don't want to read off the rest of the prices. It's, it, you know, these, it's sometimes you have to step away from the market, right? Not look at the prices. So I, I have purposely not been looking at the prices all day. Uh, you, you know, sometimes it's just good not to look at it. Like I'll come back when, the, when, when we see some green candles and green percentages, right? Uh, but we look at the Bitcoin weekly chart, you know, Bitcoin here, uh, th this, this red candle is forming for this week and it's looking strong right now. Let's hope Bitcoin's price recovers a bit. And we can hopefully end a week on a, a you know a green candle. We'll see. Uh, you know, I, I was predicting this pullback, right? You guys who have been following the channel, I said we were going to pull back, um, but I was not expecting the pullback to go this far down to this extent. Uh, uh, we had talked about it. Bitcoin had to hold fifty three thousand um, dollars, and if we did go below it, it would be a, a, a bigger hole to dig ourselves out of. With that said, I do believe we are still in a bull market. And I, I tweeted about this today. I want to make sure I share it with you guys. I tweeted my thoughts on the current state of Bitcoin. Are we going into a bear market or continuing in a bull market? So I want to make sure we have to talk about both scenarios because you cannot throw one out, uh, guys. You cannot say, I'm a bull, so I don't care about the bear market. You cannot do that because no one knows the features there, the future. There's no certainty, there's no guarantees. So we have to look at the data and make our, our best educated guess. 
So I talked about this. We cannot throw out the, the probability of one of these scenarios playing out. Um, I said, I personally think we have not hit the blow off top for BTC due to the following reasons. Um, one, we have not seen true retail mania phase. I haven't seen that frenzy yet uh, that I saw in 2017. Number two, the narrative and media frenzy has not happened yet for a euphoric pump to a blow off top. I haven't seen it yet, guys. I haven't seen the madness that I saw in 2017. Um, number three, multiple models and charts show we have not hit the peak yet. So different analysts and different models that have been running for years, I'm going to share some of it after this, are still showing, hey, where's the blow off top peak? It hasn't, it hasn't even shown on the chart, right? Uh, here, number four, if Bitcoin is moving down into a bear market, so let's say Bitcoin is absolutely correcting, it, is, it has hit its top. Well, where is the alt season? Where is it? It has happened historically. Is that it? Or is the entire bull market done? That's it? Cl you know, Close up shop, everybody go home? I haven't seen it. And I, I think that still has to come. So once again, this is where the patience comes in and we have to watch the charts and, and, the, uh, and the news as well and see what's happening. Number five, I've shared this before, miners are not selling their Bitcoin. The price is dropping. Why are they not selling? Why are they just holding on to what they're mining? I still think they're anticipating higher prices, guys. And we saw institutional investors buy the dip. MicroStrategy, El Salvador, uh, Alex Mashinsky tweeted he did, and, and a few others. So look, with that said, I could, I could still be wrong because I don't know the future. But if I were to put some percentages to this, I would say... 60%, we are still in a bull market. 40%, we're going into that bear market. Um, so uh, once again, I'm more bullish based on facts, not my emotions, not that because I want to make money, but rather what, what's happening here, right? In the back of my mind, I'm thinking about where is that uh, uh, alt season? Because that, that's a big one, right? Because I know I can make money off of that, even if I didn't sell Bitcoin at $69,000. Uh, so that's where the, the big question mark in my mind, guys, and, and along with these other factors. Now, Plan B tweeted out uh, yesterday, um, he said, 50K to 60K Bitcoin since March. Patience is the key. Showing the stock to flow model is still on track. Don't get it confused with his floor model predictions. That was off completely, but the stock to flow model is still on track. The other model I've shared with you guys is the CBBI uh, index. This is Col uh, Colin Talks Crypto Bitcoin Bull Run Index. Currently, the score is at 53. In the past bull runs, the score has hit 90 and above. This bull market so far, it hasn't even surpassed 76. It hit 76. So another uh, indicator here showing where is that blow off top? So the lengthening cycles theory that I know Benjamin Cohen of Into the, Into the Cryptoverse has been saying for a long time, Looks like it's coming to pass. And this CBBI index uses multiple data. Look at this. Is it how many are here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 indicators, 11 different uh, points of metrics. So uh, it's a really solid chart. Um, but once again, take it with a grain of salt because no one can predict the future. Now, with that said, Colin Talks Crypto did a nice quick video today. I'll play it for you guys. He said, Bitcoin patterns in 2021, the CBBI says we're currently at 54. We haven't even broken 76 yet during this macro price cycles. Let me play the, the clip here. I just drew this little diagram here. If you zoom out at different time spans, there's a very like eerie pattern going on here with these little bubbles. Like the one in April was a huge one up to 64,000, then it corrected back down and there's been these little hop ups and then they correct and then they drop down. And I mean, just look at those two little blue circles I drew there. I mean, they're almost freaking identical and the pattern up to this point has been almost freaking identical. So I think that we're very, very close to a sudden and sharp movement upward, just like that green arrow shows going up on both cases. I think we're like days away from that moment. I hope he's right. He's you know saying that we could see some upward movement, but we will have to wait and see because once again, no one can predict the future. 
Uh, and, you know, personally, I hope he's right, but I am also open to him not being right. And this price keeps going down. We shall see what happens. Now, here's another uh, great model macro level view from Blake on Twitter, who tweeted the following. In previous Bitcoin cycles, there have been two primary trend lines and a third parabolic one to the cycle top. In my opinion, we are on the second and missing the parabolic one. Notice how price dropped below the second trend uh, line several times the last two cycles. See notes. So I know this chart may be a bit difficult to see, guys. Let me see if I can uh, maybe zoom in a little bit here. Um, you'll see trend line one, and this is in 2013, trend line two, and trend line three. 2017, trend line one, trend line two, and trend line three. Uh, the current cycle that we're in, trend line one, trend line two, and where is trend line three? So again, <laughs> right? These different uh, models are still showing no blow off top. Where is it? Uh, so the extended market cycle is playing out here. And I think we'll see that blow off top in, in uh, 2022. Uh, in my recent interview with macro investor, Rao Powell, you know, he's calling for the middle of next year. We'll see what happens. But uh, here's something that's cool, too. He weighed in on this situation and talked a bit about the sentiment. He said, wow, everyone has gotten super bearish on everything in digital assets. I do think crimped excess disposable income due to inflation is partially to blame. The marginal retail buyer is more marginal. Uh, he said, year over year, rate of change of Fed balance sheet is also a factor, but in past cycles, risk on continued in the main. But a lot is position squaring and rebalancing after a good year of owning risk. Uh, and he said, tax selling too. But my view is that the game hasn't changed. Uh, he said, and many are scarred by past cycles when this point in the halving cycle produced the top. So obviously close to December is when we've historically seen this. He said, but past damages to your psyche can also cause you to be excessively cautious in what appears to be an elongated cycle or change of structure. So talking about the lengthening cycles and that, uh, you know, guys like Willy Wu have said, you know, the four-year halving cycles are not going to have as much of an impact anymore because the supply is being grabbed up um, and a majority of it, because we, we just reported that 90% of Bitcoin has been mined, and we know a lot has been lost, and a lot of institutions are buying. So those things could affect the four-year uh, cycles that we've seen. Uh, Raul says, but we haven't seen a blow-off top with record participation. This is what I've been saying for a while. We have, been, we have seen speculation of some size in NFTs, but that is mainly people who already have ETH and have profits to burn. Funds will be allocating fresh PL and new mandates in Q1, so talking about 2022. And if that drives prices sharply higher, it will bring record new wallets, et cetera. And long term holders will begin to put coins on exchanges to top slice. Remember, digital assets overall have gone nowhere since May, unless you were lucky to nail a pump. But the rally from the July low has seen most digital assets well below their highs. But meaningful institutional adoption is on underway, along with exponential new uh, use cases. So he goes on and goes on. I want I don't want to read the entire thing. You guys can obviously go read it on Twitter. But I think what he's saying here is spot on, and he's following some of the uh, you know macro level view of the market. Though those principles, which I uh, you know certainly lend myself to, and, and certainly echo uh, in how I look at the market now. Before I go further, I want to show you guys another model here and bear with me because it's important to look at these different models to get an idea of what may come next. This is called the Bitcoin uh, Three Peaks and Domed House. Uh, I personally had not had not heard about this before, but this is George Lindsay's I idealized Three Peaks and the Domed House. So you see this model here and uh, Crypto Yuri tweeted the following Bitcoin Three Peaks and Domed House. The first floor is not perfect, but the pattern, but this pattern is in confluence with Bitcoin cycles and blow off top theory. So we've had from, uh, I would say March or yeah, February to May, the three peaks. Um, we've also had basement bear trap from June to August. 
we are now uh, we for the first floor we were uh, that started in September to November, and obviously we find ourselves in December where we are in that pullback phase before a move up to the roof, which would then be the blow off top and also a bull trap and a plunge to a bear market. So, look, this this is interesting. Will it happen this way? I don't know. We just have to be patient, uh, but. I like to be educated about this and know what to potentially expect and be prepared for different scenarios. So we shall see. But like I said, long story short, I still think this thing has not ended yet. I still think Bitcoin has a blow off top to head to. Now, let's move ahead, guys. Big news around the SEC. Hester Peirce, she tweeted the following. The latest regulatory agenda shows that the SEC will be busy in the upcoming months, but it won't be working on the right things. Wow, shots fired. And she linked to this article um, on the SEC's website that is from her and Commissioner Elad Roisman. Here's the title, Failing, oh, excuse me, Falling Further Back, Statement on Chair Genser's Regulatory Agenda. Wow. Uh, <laughs> let me read the opening line here. While Chair Gary Genser's newly released regulatory agenda is ambitious in scope, we are disappointed with its content. Yeah, not only you, the rest of the crypto market is as well, <laughs> Hester. Uh, it fails to include any items intended to facilitate capital formation and, and misses opportunities to foster fair, orderly, and efficient markets and further investor protection. Instead, the agenda is brimming with plans to redo recently completed rules and add new regulatory obligations and constrain investor choice. Now, this talks about a variety of things, but let me jump down to the crypto uh, area here, which is number three, and this is called furthering investor in, uh, protection. The agenda also comes up short on, for, on furthering the investor protection prong of our mission by failing to provide more clarity on digital assets. Thank you, Hester Purse. Thank you, Elad Roisman. Uh, it says here, first, the agenda makes no mention of any regulation with respect to digi digital assets. In the last several years, this sector has grown in size, complexity, diversity, and investor interest. Um, whoops, looks like I did something here. Rather than taking on the difficult task of formulating rules to allow investors and regulated entities to interact with digital assets, including digital asset securities, the agenda through its silence on crypto signals that the market can expect continued questions around the application of our securities laws to this area of increasing investor interest. Such silence emboldens fraudsters and hinders conscientious participants who want to comply with the law. Absolutely. freaking lutely um, And I'm glad they're doing this, guys. Again, sir, we know, we've been talking about it. He's a bankster puppet. He's trying to grab as much power as possible. We've heard that he's doing all of this, you know, hard-nosed regulations and talk because he wants the treasury job. And he's a Goldman Sachs guy. And we know, guys, he's trying to slow crypto down as much as possible because it's disrupting the banks. And in fact, he could be slowing crypto down so his bankster friends take a larger position. Then uh, you know he might bring it in. But th this is ridiculous. And obviously, the SEC lawsuit against Ripple hurt XRP holders. And he wants to continue what Jay Clayton did and, and do regulation by enforcement which is just asinine. Why don't you just put out the clear road, road, uh, road guidelines and let people operate under them? If they break the guidelines or go out of it, then you, you do enforcement, right? Uh, simple. It's, it's, it's really simple, but he doesn't want that, guys. They want to go, go around and shake down crypto companies, get as much settlement money as possible. It's pathetic, but th you know, thank goodness for Hester Purse and Elad Roisman who are trying to push innovation and help this uh, economy in this country grow and, and investors to, to be able to confidently invest and make money. Um, you know, the SEC, I think, has gone away from its core mission. I'm not blaming Hester Purser, or Commissioner Rosman, but, you know, I don't know if it started with Jay Clayton or before that, but 
clearly the SEC, they're in the pockets, the, the organization, the people who lead it are in the pockets of these banksters. Um, they're, they're, they're trying to protect these incumbents, guys. It's pathetic. Um, and on that note, guys, uh, I, we talked about Empower Oversight, which is suing the SEC for not releasing uh, FOIA, which is Freedom of Information Act request for documents relating to conflicts of interest with Jay Clayton and William Hinman, uh, especially around this lawsuit of Ripple. And I interviewed the founder and president, and that interview will be live tomorrow morning. You don't want to miss it, guys. We talk about this. I love this. The SEC is getting sued. We need to put pressure on them. And this is one avenue to get uh, the information we need and expose any conflicts of interest. So uh, great news here that Hester Peirce and Elad Roisman are doing this. And uh, this will sh show publicly that there's a divide and that Congress needs to act and, and force Genser to do the right thing here. And you have these different organizations which are uh, you know, keeping an eye on what the SEC is doing. Better do the right thing. You're taking people's tax money. You're supposed to be representing them and you're not. So uh, I love this. Once again, that interview will be live in the morning. Now, let's get to this big news. I'm, I'm really excited about this news, guys. This is, this is big. So $243 billion UAE wealth fund, Mubadala, if I'm saying right, to invest in the crypto ecosystem. Of course they are. <laughs> uh, crypto is real. I'm no longer a skeptic. It will continue to grow. This is from the Mubadala CEO. Guys, there's a lot of money in the Middle East. Uh, we're talking Saudi Arabia. We're talking Dubai, UAE. A lot of oil money out there, my friends. And many of you who watch Kevin O'Leary talk about crypto, he's been talking about this for a while, about sovereign wealth funds. And there's a lot of them there. And with traditional financial products like bonds failing and it, with inflation. And I've been sharing this news with you guys, right? I've been tweeting about it. The more bonds fail globally, watch the capital flow into crypto. And uh, I, I, this has me very bullish because there's just capital sitting there waiting to come into crypto. And I know for a fact, Kevin O'Leary, he talked about he's going out there to talk to some of these investors. So I think a lot of money uh, is on its way. Let, let me give you uh, uh, an update here. Um, so he had said that sovereign wealth funds or sovereign funds in Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates represent the real opportunity for transforming the crypto markets place. Wow. This, this is uh, bullish in my opinion, and also another indication of there's more to go in this bull run, guys. Um, all right, look at this. German savings bank to offer Bitcoin trading. This is according to a, a report. The Sparkassen, if I'm saying that right, are centuries old regional institutions with about 370 branches and 50 million customers. The market leaders among German financial institutions are reportedly working on a Bitcoin trading feature, which could launch in 2022. The, Sp the Sparkassen are centuries old regional. Okay, just mentioned that to you guys. The offering would cut down intermediaries and enable Spark Sparkass customers to trade Bitcoin from their checking accounts. My OG subscribers and listeners, have I not been talking to you guys about this for years? Right, I've always done the mock scenario. Mr. Jones, how are you doing today? This is blah blah blah. John Doe from Chase Bank. I'm calling you to you know let you know you can invest in cryptocurrencies uh, through your savings and checking account, and we'll custody your crypto for you. And don't worry, I'll take care of everything. I'll send you monthly reports on how the price is doing. You can always call me up. Yada 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 yada. It's coming, my friends. All the banks are here all the stock exchanges, all the hedge funds, all the corporates, they're coming. And I tweeted about it the other day. You know, Tim Cook, in an interview about a month ago, he said, you know, I he holds Bitcoin and Ethereum. But he said, you know, he has no plans for Apple to hold any of his balance sheet. But then we just saw the inflation numbers, record-breaking. Uh, it hasn't been this high since 40 years ago. And I tweeted that, hey, I wouldn't be surprised if Tim Cook and these and Apple and Google's change their mind because of the inflation continuing. They're going to print more money, devaluing the cash that these companies hold in their balance sheet. 
uh, guys, if you don't see what's happening here, you got bank stock exchange, all these folks, everybody's heading in the same direction. And, and this is where you have to be patient. Uh, finally, on that note of institutional investors, Fidelity, which is a powerhouse, they have trillions of dollars under, ask, uh, under management. Uh, their Europe head said Bitcoin will play prominent role in investment portfolios. Chris Tyler leads all client service activity for the region, addressing their needs to secure trade and support digital assets. So uh, we had covered this news where uh, Fidelity is expanding to um, Europe in the UK. We know uh, what was very disappointing, Fidelity launched their Bitcoin spot ETF on the Toronto Stock Exchange. N not disappointing for them, but for the United States. You know, we I, I tweeted about it. It's just, it's just, uh, uh, such such a shame. Like it's so disappointing that they, as an American company, should have been launching their spot ETF, which the SEC should approve, and the other spot ETFs should be launched and listed on the New York Stock Exchange and Nasdaq and so forth. But they have to go outside the country. So it goes back to Gary Genser. This man has to be stopped. And once again, I'm glad Hester Purse and Elad Roisman are taking this stance and uh, I hopefully Congress is, these folks in Congress are viewing this and they take action. And maybe by Q1 of 2022, we get full crypto regulations. And maybe that is the catalyst to send the price higher to a bluff top. I don't know, could be, but uh, you know, things are moving along. We just gotta be patient. Let me know what you guys think about this news. Leave your thoughts and comments below, hit the thumbs up button, share this video, and I'll talk to you all later. Thank you.